Eco-Atlantic Oil and Gas, listed on the Namibian Stock Exchange this morning. This is the first oil and gas company to list in Namibia. The exploration company is focused primarily on the new and burgeoning energy play in the southern African country. The company's CEO and President Gil Holtzman now joins us from Namibia. Good morning, Gil. Hi, good morning. Or oh, well, good should afternoon. I say good power lunch to you? That's right, good power yeah. lunch. Uh, you listed this morning, always exciting to have a, a new listing, and you're the first in the field uh, in Namibia. Just give us the context for this. It's not a primary listing, for example. That's correct. It's a, it, actually, it's a secondary listing. We, we're simply mirroring the, the primary listing in Toronto Stock Exchange, which took place five months ago. We're now mirroring it into a, a Namibia for various reasons. First of all, we consider ourselves to be a true Namibian international company. Unlike other uh, international companies, we have a very strong base in Namibia with 20% of our shareholders or the founders of the company Namibians. We have Namco, the National Petroleum Corporation, with 10% carried interest in our licenses. And of course, we have the royalty regime uh, of which we, get, we, we pay back the government once we discover the oil. So in that sense, we consider ourselves a Namibian international company. It was very natural for us to bring the company into Namibia and to list it in the Namibian Stock Exchange. By the way, a painless effort. They took us less than four weeks to get all the approvals. The yes. reason we do it is because, the reason we do it is because for many reasons, especially forex uh, regulations, uh, the Namibian general public, as well as institutions in South Africa and in Namibia, cannot take an active role in the share, pr in the share trading in uh, Toronto or in London, for example. And therefore, we now bring the company into, into Namibia in order to enable the general public, the institutions, and the government decision makers to have a much better visibility of our operations and the company and to enable them to participate. I can tell you that the oil and gas industry, exploration industry in Namibia, is being uh, uh, rapidly involving in the past two, three years. Before that, not much activity would took place. And I now with international big players like BP, Chariot Oil and Gas, HRT and Petrobras, all from Brazil, uh, we are the, the fifth company to actually uh, uh, be public and, and, and uh, uh, offer this kind of opportunity to our Toronto-based uh, uh, investors, to the London-based investors, and now to Namibia. Well, I was g going to say also in your notes, you talk about uh, uh, Namibia and the uh, available geology for the exploration and uh, the, the point that it seems comparable to Brazil, uh, therefore great hopes for this field and uh, perhaps bigger than people have realized. Um, I, share, I share this enthusiasm and I share this uh, belief. Um, you must, uh, uh, we must understand, the first, the first two big companies that entered into Namibia in this new exploration era were the Brazilians, HRT and Petrobras. The reason they did it is because Brazil, Dos Santos Basin in, in, uh, in specific, is account for 60 billion barrels of oil discovered in the past decade. Now, there, is, there are a lot of uh, uh, geological theories and geological evidence that off, offshore Namibia or the coast of the Atlantic offshore Namibia is basically geologically mirroring what's going on uh, uh, the other side of the Atlantic uh, in Brazil. And therefore, there's a lot of hope and a lot of promise, new and new geology that suggests that we might be able to find subsalt and subshell oil just like they did in Brazil in the past decade. A lot of activity there. Uh, in terms of timing and oil prices and gas prices, we in South Africa are more familiar with the oil price. We worry much more about that because Sassel is very, Sassel's fortunes are very much linked to that uh, oil price. Less gas focus for us. How important is the gas element for, for you? The gas element is important, but gas with uh, current uh, uh, global prices, uh, which are currently low, there's a lot of uh, gas uh, supply uh, in the United States and elsewhere, with new discoveries in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean and elsewhere. The gas is, uh, is, uh, is, is a commodity that basically is good for uh, uh, local consumption, meaning the Kudu gas field for, for, uh, uh, south, of, uh, 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 south of the Orange Basin, offshore uh, Namibia, will probably uh, be utilized to power a, a, a local power plant and, a, a, and it's good for local consumption. However, oil, which is totally different in that sense, you can sh simply take a barrel and ship it a, a, a anywhere around the world. So therefore, we are much more focused on oil. This is why we are focused on Walvis, Bay, where, on Walvis Basin, which is an oil kitchen, as we see it uh, uh, according to our geologists, uh, whereas gas is, is, uh, is, is less of our focus. However, if we would find gas, of course, that will show that the hydro hydrocarbons are there 
and probably there's some oil beneath. The uh, field that you're in is, is pretty large, and uh, this is not an easy business to be in. Um, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, you've got uh, a lot of infrastructure issues. At what point are you with the company in terms of building what you need to build in order to get to maximum uh, exploitation? That's, that's a very good uh, question. We, we're not in exploitation stage just yet. Hopefully we'll be there soon. Uh, we, we recently finished uh, uh, the uh, very formal 2D seismic uh, uh, survey suggesting that we have some real interesting structures underneath the ocean bed on our licenses offshore uh, Namibia. Some are shallow, some are, are more deep. We're now going to enter into 200 million Namibian dollars, a 200 million rand kind of effort in the upcoming few, few months of shooting high quality uh, 3D seismic all over our, our known structures and the leads that we see based on our 2D, following which we will uh, uh, identif better identify the drilling targets uh, on our three offshore licenses. I must uh, uh, mention here that Chariot Oil and Gas, uh, our, our, uh, uh, um, you know, our peers to the north, have uh, recently spotted a well, the first well ever been drilled offshore Namibia based on 3D uh, findings. They spotted a well two weeks ago, and we all, uh, you know, looking up to them and cross our fingers for them to, to be the first one to, to actually uh, uh, discover the oil, and of course it will attract much bigger and uh, uh, more lucrative players into, into the play, and hopefully we'll be able to drill as many wells as we plan in the upcoming two years. Mm. Gil, uh, you talked about it being relatively easy to list in Namibia. They, you said four weeks, everything sorted out, but of course it's not just the stock exchange, it's the country. And I think resources, uh, commodities, miners generally, certainly with South Africa, there are issues about how easy is it to do business, get licenses, open up the hurdles that have to be cleared in regulatory terms, in our case, empowerment as well. How has it been in terms of ease of doing business in Namibia or next to Namibia as you are? Well, I, I bring uh, some, me and my partners, we bring some, uh, uh, some African uh, uh, experience in the mining and uh, exploration sector, oil and gas and other commodities. Uh, I, I was working in other places, DRC Kinshasa, for example, Ghana, Nigeria, Botswana, elsewhere. I can tell you right up front, Namibia is the best country to do business in uh, the uh, uh, resource sector. It's the most hospitable, it's the most uh, uh, investor-friendly country that I have ever worked with. By the way, not only in Africa. There are uh, places in Europe that I would find uh, much more difficult to work uh, uh, than uh, in Namibia. So the, the government, the transparency, the, 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 the way of doing business, the, the, the warm welcome that we get from the Namibian authorities, and the very professional manner that they treat their business is, uh, is just a, a, you know, a great experience for us to do business and we are committed to Namibia because uh, 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 we would really like to uh, um, develop this uh, uh, exploration sector with the Namibian government and for the benefit of Namibia, first and foremost, uh, for, for Namibia, for its energy independence and for its people. And uh, one last question for you, Gil, and uh, investors are always interested in this. You know, it's all very well making the revenue and some profit, but what are the taxes? Are they royalties? Are they, what do you, how friendly is the tax regime to a company like yours when you get going? Um, you know, I've, I've been working in other places in the world. Namibia has a very, uh, um, um, very reasonable kind of uh, tax and, and uh, tax and royalty regime. At the moment, there is a five percent uh, 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 royalty out of uh, the gross uh, uh, revenue of each barrel. Uh, on top, you have thirty-five percent corporate tax. It's very reasonable. It's really uh, encouraging foreign investors to come and invest into the country because they know they they can make some good return on their investment, whereas part, of, part of, of the cake would stay in the Namibian government hands and in the Namibian people. I, I, again, I, I should mention that we have NAMCO, the National Petroleum Corporation, as a 10% free carry to production in our licenses. We were the first one to accept the government's request to carry them, and now it's a standard. Now every license in Namibia has to carry NAMCO, the government, or the people, uh, uh, to production, and I think that's the best way for uh, 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 government and private or public sectors like us to uh, participate together. We take the highest risk of bringing the funds from capital markets in Toronto, in New York and London. And at the end of the day, if there is a success, we share it together with the government and with the local people.